what is going on cyber fam today we have another special one uh this one is actually brought to you by nobody <laughs> i'm just kidding i have no sponsors but um i know you guys love the palantir content you damn fiends so uh this one is actually introduced to me by chris patel who is on twitter uh if you're not following him i don't know what you're doing the guy's like amazing at doing research i mean the guy's actually posting some you know quality content for research work whereas i'm posting mac and cheese pictures <laughs> so you know give him a give him a follow and uh you know check out some of his content it's truly worth it anyway so we'll get right into it there's a four minute clip on ibm that released their partnership with palantir for a specific initiative that they're trying to do uh, i'll chime in on it this does correlate with a lot of the stuff that i do uh, day to day and uh, i'll sort of give you my thoughts and uh yeah let's just see how it goes so let's take a look at this video cloud pack Four minutes. Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Love and I'm a data platform solution engineer for IBM. I am very excited to share with you today the new partnership that was just announced between big data analytics company Palantir and the industry's leading hybrid cloud mm -hmm. provider, IBM. This announcement marks the launch of Palantir for Cloud Pack for Data. So let me start with what is Cloud Pack for Data? Cloud Pack for Data is the result of many years of strategizing and product development to build a premier hybrid cloud-enabled, enterprise-ready man data management and analytics platform. Mm. We started with a simple idea, run anywhere. Cloud Pack has been designed to leverage our acquisition of Red Hat and uses uh, Red Hat OpenShift to run in a containerized microservices architecture on any environment. And this includes the IBM cloud, your on-premises data center, uh, or natively in any public cloud provider like Azure, AWS, uh, or GCP. Next, we developed a catalog of really powerful services uh, around the data and AI lifecycle. Services that are responsible for collecting and cleaning data wherever it lives, okay. organizing that data into knowledge catalogs complete with enterprise-grade governance, uh, and then analyzing that data using predictive analytics and machine learning, covering a variety of technologies and methodologies. Infusing those insights across the business using robust BI and planning capabilities. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's go back to this for real the quick. Powerful services uh, around the data and AI lifecycle. Services that are responsible for collecting and cleaning data wherever yeah. it lives, organizing that data into knowledge catalogs complete with enterprise-grade governance, uh, and then analyzing that data using predictive analytics and machine learning, covering a variety of technologies and methodologies. Mm. And finally, infusing those insights across the business using robust BI and planning capabilities. The massive appeal of our platform has been fueled by supporting both tried and tested IBM technologies like Netiza, DB2, Cognos, SPSS, and Watson Studio, uh, just to name a few, as well as extensively supporting uh, open source and third-party vendor tools. <laughs> okay, let's move on to Palantir now. Palantir has established itself uh, in the industry over the past nearly 20 years as an expert in building operational applications and helping turn insights into decisions. Very true. Their Foundry platform has focused on modeling the enterprise using concepts and terms that businesses use every day, right? Uh, they then map these terms into operational aspects of the business, building what they call the business ontology. Uh, the ontology allows organizations to do dynamic scenario planning and build no-code, low-code applications that help their uh, actual frontline operations members, mm -hmm. like people allocating vaccines, technicians doing network build-outs, uh, to actually make data-driven decisions. All right. So now we can finally focus on how these two very powerful platforms uh, are coming together in this new partnership. Tell me. Palantir for Cloud Pack for Data will be available as another one of those services that I mentioned uh, that's a part of our platform's services catalog. Okay, this okay. offering will leverage the best of both platforms. Cloud Pack for Data will be used to build a really solid, performant underlying data architecture that will automate the collection, organization, and analysis of enterprise data. Palantir will then be used to take data and AI models from CloudPack and automatically map it into a business meaning and provide an environment to build no-code, low-code operational applications. So I like to think of it as 
Cloudpack for Data connects to all those critical legacy systems and handles the messy business of data management. Okay. And Palantir allows you to easily build custom business apps to start leveraging the insights from all of this data. IBM has done a, a great job infusing insights across the business when it comes to financial planning or reporting. But for other innovative use cases, Palantir has really <laughs> emerged as an excellent partner. Yeah, for everything else. And now for the first time, businesses can start to leverage both. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. There's a few things that we got to clip yes. here. Cloud pack for data and analysis. Okay, stop, brother. Stop. Okay. Actually, before we do this, let's take a look at this one thing that I want to mention here. Right here. Okay. Okay. Guys, this is like another Hyundai, um, you know, by, like with Merck and all this other stuff. It's, it's basically like that. It's just, but it's, it's a little bit less so because you're there's actually a legitimate handshake from another system altogether um so in some cases apollo feeds the models to foundry right over here it's a cloud pack um oh my god okay so he here here's what this is okay here's what this is first of all before we get started can we just have like a, a quick round of applause for ibm's like fantastic career these guys are like one of the pioneers of the game Back in their days, back in their heydays, these guys were like the Tesla and the Apple and, you know, Google. Everybody wanted to work here, you know. Um, but at the same time, right after that, can we also have a quick moment of silence for their absolutely <laughs> crazy downfall? Their modern implementations and anything that they're trying to compete with now because they're getting absolutely eaten alive for the most part. And they're sort of just hanging along. Um, I don't know. Anyway, besides the point. Okay. So it looks like by the way when he talks about open shift and all this other stuff to be honest guys it shouldn't blow your mind or anything I'm only i'm only saying that because open shift what it is 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 at a fundamental level it's actually quite a great product it's a very good product i've used it many times and it in a way it actually is very collaborative because it brings people that are not too technical and technical enough to but both of them actually understand the process of what open shift does you're able to just dive in and, and get your operational tasks done okay but the reality of it is, it's basically like a very good wrapper on top of uh, Kubernetes for the most part. Like I'm really simplifying here, of course, there's other nuances, but let's, you know, it, there's, there's open source software that does pretty much what OpenShift does anyway. Now, IBM was able to use this from the acquisition of Red Hat, which is actually quite a big, big thing. You know, IBM made a good move actually by doing that. It's, it keeps them competitive. I think that's a very strong move. Okay. Now... What IBM is doing here, IBM, uh, if you guys don't know, has their own cloud, okay? But they, I think they're starting to realize that they're not able to compete at a cloud offering level. So what they're doing is they're creating these data, data analytics type of partnerships and type of like collaborations that can be leveraged on other cloud platforms, right? So if you have an AWS stack then or a GCP stack or an Azure stack, which is uh, Amazon, Google, and Microsoft Cloud, by the way, you can use this product actually to, that's what they were talking about, uh, like, you know, it's agnostic, right? You can leverage that into your space. Uh, another thing they mentioned moving forward was the whole catalog thing, right? Where you, you're able to access this through the catalog. He mentioned that towards the end. What that is, I'll explain that to you in a second, but let's let's get through this here. Um, infuse, analyze, organize, collect. So this is, this is very standard stuff. If you remember from my Hyper Auto, demo thing i was talking about the whole etl process and elt and all these different processes right all that is all of those things are, are basically just uh, overarching processes to grab data and to stage it in a way to the next step right whether it's going towards analysis whether it's going towards more massaging of the data that's it's just a process thing guys okay so what they're showing you here in this picture is just that it's just the whole process of bringing that data forward so they clearly have some sort of pipe that sits there and 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 brings that process and they have a level of automation that does that already um not too long ago you would actually hire people to do this and people actually still you know, this is people's jobs literally to go in and uh, and and adjust certain schemas in a way where when you're actually pulling the data you add these filter you know can you picture it you pull the data and there's like you know i want it when i pull it i only want certain stuff so it looks a certain way on the next step do you know what i mean so that's that's basically what that process is and these guys have aligned to that okay that's what that is now how this is working is after they model this right 
they're moving that model into Foundry because I don't think IBM itself, and they might, but I really don't think they have nearly, nearly enough capability like how Foundry would to take these models and actually do something with it that's beyond just the initial surface data level, right? Because you need to find the relationships, you need to find the inferences, all that stuff to actually make informed decisions moving forward. And it's not just a matter of just filtering data based on some custom filter that you think is 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 relevant, right? Because a lot of these filters and these processes are actually handed down by scope, which means there are people in, in meeting rooms that say, okay, we want to look at this data this way. You're trying to fit it into a box. It may or may not fit there. You know what I'm saying? So by using Foundry, you can fit into a box if you want to, but it'll also show you all sorts of different options uh, and, and different sort of like varieties of what this could potentially be down the line. You guys get what I'm saying a little bit? Of course, like, you know, I, I don't work there, right? So I, I, I'm just speculating here based on like what I know, but this is this is what I think it is. Now, let's move on to the next clip. Okay, you see here, this is like the sort of like stack totally. So cloud pack for data, collect data, organize data, analyze data, infuse data. Boom. You see what I'm saying? This is what I was taking from before. All the other competitors, all the other companies have this, guys. Microsoft has this. Everyone has this. Okay, this is like a very standard process in the industry. Um, you actually don't need any of them to, to do it. There, there's other tools that you could use as well. But, you know, they might do it faster. For example, IBM might provide something where it organized data part of this it might perform better than something that microsoft offers or something right you see that's where the arbitrage is now this is all standard stuff okay um the open shift thing is what allows them to run in containers which are basically like a think of it as a performance boost for for any sort of like large process um into wherever you want to move so um any kind of hybrid cloud any gcp azure wherever else you want to move it, it they support OpenShift and they support Kubernetes, so they're able to port that over. IBM has built something that can run in a cloud agnostic fashion, which also, by the way, is not that unique, but for IBM to package their entire data uh, collection apparatus into something like that and put it as a module is quite big. It's it's um, It seems like they were working on this stuff for a while because, again, not that complicated to do, but for you to nail that in terms of being efficient and being competitive, it is quite difficult. And, and if they're able to do this, then this is this is going to be big for them. IBM needs to step this game up because their cloud straight up sucks. Like they, they have like maybe three or four decent products and, and it's not worth using it really, right? Because when you go to AWS, even though the, most of their stuff is just whatever, um, you have the full stack of multiple different offerings that AWS offers, GCP offers, Azure. So like, you know, you have options. Whereas with IBM, you have like one or two really, really good products and the rest of it is just kind of muddled. So, I mean, it's just my opinion, you know, don't, don't, don't get me the wrong way. I've used it, but I don't like it. Right. So it's just my, my opinion. After this, you see how it goes up the top layers of pounds here, uh, where it's low code, no code, data driven decisions, business ontologies. So it's almost like a model on top of a model. So they push all of these AI models and infuse like data models into foundry which then goes and assesses all of the different things that are coming in and then does what it does does what foundry does does its thing and actually presents it to the analyst so traditionally you only have one of these layers guys traditionally you only have like one or two of these things and then it gets to the analyst and they they do whatever they have to do with it but now you have like multiple helpers here so now you can see finally when palantir talks about how they're going to become the operating system you know of the world or whatever this is what they're talking about they're not talking about some kind of like consumer product this is completely changing the game if this this kind of relationship between the data models and like the inference models it's it's almost like you know this this will change how business is done especially with big data right because this is not traditional you do have something like this the model makes sense right if you explain this to a data engineer of course it would make sense but the if, the way that it operates and how good it is is what will be indicative and this is the thing i'm watching for like yes can sales and marketing push the product I'm, i mean i'm host i hope so right but on top of sales and marketing you also need people to buy into this kind of model because if you use this and, and i don't know how much how expensive or whatever it is right but if you do use this you're going to have something as an analyst come to you that is going to be a layup like it is going to make so much more sense to you than just sifting through vast arrays of data sets and, and making sure that um, the, the data you get is good because remember if as an analyst you're getting something that it doesn't make sense to you you have to actually go through that process all over again for the most part which is again a quite long like you can you can understand the amount of data sets that some of these companies and stuff have right the vast amounts of data so for them to like do this process again and again and again 
you know, it's time consuming and time is the number one currency of all of these companies, right? So this is huge guys, it's huge, man. It's huge. So like, like look, business users, data scientists, app developers. Now data scientists actually in the past would have to pick up Python or would have to pick up something they're not used to using in order to get their job done. But with something like this, they don't have to do any of that. They can just do what they're good at and focus on the next piece of the scope. If it's running at a full capacity, this thing is gonna save months and months and months of just work just to get something staged to present it to the people that actually make the decisions. Months. The, I wanted to touch on the catalog part. This is, I think, another angle that Palantir is choosing. What that is really is when they're partnering with all these companies, right? Especially with these kind of cloud providers and other SaaS companies, Catalog model is basically like they, they create a type of model which then sits on a catalog. And if you're the client, so if you're using IBM, right, you can actually say, okay, um, I want to do, I don't know, I want, I want to, okay, you, then you can basically say, I want to use Cloud Pack. If you want to use that and you're not currently using it, you just go to the catalog, you bloop, 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 press a few buttons, boom, modules loaded, go ahead, use it. So, can you imagine that? This is like multiple different massive systems working together. So it's like really, really cool that they were able to move this as a catalog model. I've built catalogs myself, but it's been like very rudimentary. Of course, it's nothing this big. So the fact that they're able to partner and get this stuff going is, is actually big news for me. I think more of this should come out of Palantir. To be very honest, like I'm sorry for the, all the IBM people out here. I'm really sorry, but IBM is not exactly like a, the biggest player in this thing, right? So maybe to start, maybe they're starting to just build things as they go. But the fact that IBM is even doing this is going to give them the competitive edge. I'm telling you right now, it's like if they can actually push this product and they don't overprice it, they are going to be a player. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Uh, this thing is pretty cool, man. Like Palantir is just getting more and more bullish as the days go by. And, um, you know, I'm just super excited. I'm like doing this at like three in the morning. So uh, feel free to like and subscribe if you like this stuff. I will catch you guys on the next one. Peace.